Hi, I'm Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to the first ever episode of Dye Pot Weekly. By popular demand, in this first episode, I am going to create some speckled yarn using two different colors of Kool Aid. And either, if it works, this tea strainer, and if not, maybe I'll use these salt and pepper shakers to apply the Kool Aid powder to the yarn. But first, I want to dye the entire skein's blue using some Kool-Aid Bursts to give us a nice base color before I start adding the speckles. I pre-soaked the yarn in just plain water overnight. Today I am going to be over dyeing two different skeins of yarn. The first is 75% superwash wool, 25% nylon and the second is 100% worsted weight wool. I'm going to kind of place these in the pot and I removed much of the liquid but so what I'm going to planning to do is add the Kool-Aid and then add enough water to cover the yarn and then I'll start heating it up. So I cut these Kool-Aid mixes. One, because I thought that the blue was really pretty and two, because I have memories of a kid as a kid of twisting off these caps that are pretty fun. So, um, so by adding these cold, we could end up with an even color, but also just by applying it directly to the fiber, some could bind and we could end up with some variation. Um, it would be, it could be cool to just add this straight, um, <laughs> and use these bottles as a as a application method to apply uh, the dye to fiber. But yeah, today I'm more interested in an all over color so that way our speckled yarn is not just white. And so then on one skein I'll do, I'll do specks with purple and then the other I'm planning to do some specks of red. So that's five bottles right now and oh interesting so much for look the water is already clear so it is kind of just binding to the fiber right away um, all right so the color is more actually more even in the wool skein uh, than it is on the nylon one I think that it just might be binding a lot faster on the nylon skein. We'll still heat it up, um, but now I'm taking a little more care to add this all over. But hey, we're getting two experiments in one, basically. Wow. I don't think I've ever done side-by-side -side sock yarn and wool quite like this to see what the colors do. See, I'm now trying to target specifically the white sections. But, ooh, this is going to be, even with some white sections, this is going to be a really, really cool yarn. All right, so there is actually enough water to kind of cover this. And so I'm gonna put this, oh man, do I even need, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and do some low heat. Um, just to make sure all of, yeah, there's still a t tiny bit of blue in the fiber. So, but man, I'm pretty excited that to see this additional difference. And we haven't even started speckling the yarn yet. This is really fun. After five minutes of heat, um, I am going to turn off the heat entirely and just let the yarn sit in a pot to cool off a little bit before I move it. 
the dye pot is still warm, but I am going to remove the fiber now so it can cool. So we definitely have a lot of variation of color on the wool skein, but I think that we could all agree that there's a lot more variation and even some white remaining in our sock yarn here. So once these have cooled, I'll be back so we can give them a rinse and then start speckling. The yarn has cooled off, and so I'm now going to add them to just some cool water to soak and rinse some of the sugar and corn syrup and stuff out of the fiber. I am not going to do any soap at this point because I just don't want to add that before the speckling, but I am going to do multiple rinses of this fiber in cool water to just try to remove everything extra that's in there. Before I bring the yarn into play, I am going to add some cherry Kool-Aid into this tea strainer. I really wanted to get, you know, one of those spoons you use for powdered sugar, but I had trouble finding one. All right. Slowly close that. So it looks like it should work um, because some powder is coming out. Let's set up the yarn. All right, so I'm starting with the 100% wool yarn and I've added gloves so that way I don't turn my hands red. And I have spread out the fibers um, in this middle section as much as I can so that way I can get the most coverage possible. I also use the salad spinner on this yarn to remove as much of the water as I could so that way it is damp but not soaking. And now I've got my tea strainer. I'm going to lightly some color. Look at that. Cool. I mean from one pat you get, you know, you don't, the, the, the speckles are pretty diffuse. Um, so you're not getting just like one tiny speck. But that is pretty cool. And I thought and maybe if I shake even less. Yeah, if I shake it less, you get a little more interesting. I don't want to touch this too too much. Um so it looks like I'm st I've still been a little heavy-handed and I don't really want to smush it. So we definitely, definitely have some itty-bitty specks. Um, they, but there's some areas like over here where they have like, I guess where I've added a little more powder and so it's less specked and more splotched. Um, but I think this is kind of cool. Um, I'm afraid, yeah, so the specks are starting to spread out more and more and more. I think, hmm, I wonder what I could do differently. Um, let's try turning this over. I'm going to try to do some more gentle so less is more. I'm not tapping hard at all, I'm trying to let only a couple particles fall out on various areas. Oops, see that's a bit too much. Hmm. All right, 
I'm, I would say that they're more and less specs. But now I am going to wrap this up and go, ooh, hmm, because there's powder on here as well. See, this is what happens when I'm thinking on the fly. Okay, I think I'm gonna add the yarn into my bowl and then cover that with saran wrap. And the rationale behind that is that there's a lot of dye left on the table and I do not want um, to smear it too much. Roll this up. You can see that there's a lot of Kool-Aid on there. Take this, wrap it up. Okay. This is a microwave safe bowl. So I think we're going to have some specks maybe, but also some splotches. So, all right, I'm going to microwave this for probably a total of four minutes in two minute intervals until it is hot to touch. I have not rinsed the tea strainer, so there is still, potentially still some red powder in there, but I'm gonna fill it now carefully. Get the great Kool-Aid. Here is our nylon blend yarn, and we can already see that it's splotchier than the wool yarn. So maybe it will kind of absorb the Kool-Aid faster. I also have learned that I want to be really, really gentle when I'm shaking this. Really gentle. Really gentle. And Okay, I think I'm getting a lot smaller, like I'm barely even shaking it. Oops. Can you even, I guess you can't even see on camera. Let me zoom in. So can you see some specks? start to show up like around in there. Um, they, unlike the red, I think the grape is at, behaving a lot more subtly. Um, it's not kind of blooming as much as it absorbs the water. Gently shaking this over the yarn. So I think that if you only wanted specks in one section, oops, this might be easier than trying to like speckle larger areas. Yeah, the, the grape is a lot more subtle. Um, and when you zoom out, you can barely see it. Like when you, if I look really closely, you can really, really see these specks. Uh, they're just not as bright. And even in this area over here where there's a lot, it looks very much like it's staying kind of speckled versus being a bit more diffuse all over. I wonder. Oh, that was a lot. Let's do a little more over here. And so it looks like, you know, oh, this is pretty heavily speckled. But because it's mostly just getting one side of the yarn, there will be a lot of spaces that don't have very much speckling at all.
Okay, but even now, we are starting to see the specks sort of, they're starting to spread out and diffuse a bit through the fiber. And once again, I'm a little torn between rolling this up into a jelly roll versus putting it straight in the, in a bowl like I did with the cherry. Um, I guess I'm trying to wipe up the edge. Hmm. Well, it wouldn't be a true comparison if I do this slightly differently, but I guess since I'm already using different colors already, then it's not really an equal comparison. I will say that there is a lot of chatter on various dyeing groups with the best ways to achieve speckles. I'm going to microwave the yarn on two minute intervals um, until it's piping hot, probably for a total of four minutes. Our two yarns are still super hot, so we need to let them cool off. But here, certainly, I do see some tiny little specks in there, but I also see some a lot, a lot of bigger patches of red. It's a lot harder to know what's going on in the jelly roll. Um, there's still a lot of steam, and so it's hard to see. So we'll wait for them to cool, and then we'll wash these skeins of yarn. It is time to rinse this speckle attempt, and I'm going to show you that we definitely do have some speckling. We have a lot of larger patches as well, but there's no doubt that we do have some fine speckles. Um, let's turn this over, and yeah, ooh, over here we have a lot. A lot of little specks. So, but then yeah, here we've got, you know, much bigger red section. Um, and we will see, because it's possible that there was still some powder dye. Yep, we've got some dye coming out. So, we are going to want to rinse this. We're going to want to rinse this with uh, a lot of dish soap and water until the water runs clear. Um, I was expecting there to be some color in the yarn because we had used so much food coloring on this and then it hadn't all dissolved until potentially now. But I believe that the color in the yarn will remain in the yarn. We'll just wash this thoroughly and then when the water runs clear, hang it up to dry. We can kind of see through the plastic now, and we definitely have some itty bitty specks, and potentially some larger patches of color. So let's unwind this to see what we got. Probably should be wearing gloves, because there's likely some extra food coloring in here. Um, now that is some speckling. Check that out. Wow, that is beautiful. Now I have a real feeling that the big reason we saw some great speckling here and with this great uh, Kool-Aid versus the cherry Kool-Aid on the 100% wool yarn is that we've got this nylon blend. And the difference for this is so apparent from when we dyed the yarn at the beginning and saw how quickly the food coloring stuck to the fiber when we were using the bottles of Kool-Aid. And so then with the specks, you know, the color just didn't spread out as much as it absorbed. So maybe if you're trying to get a speckled yarn, you really want to pay attention to the fibers that you are using. And it looks like most of the color is actually within the fiber. It's a bit soapy. And so I'm going to wash this pretty vigorously, but 
I'm really excited about this. I think that this worked great. <laughs> Here are our finished speckled yarns. Right here we have the wool nylon sock yarn blend that we used, that we got, that we speckled with grape Kool-Aid. And even in places where we added, I guess, a little too much of the dry Kool-Aid, we still see really discreet specks. Over here we have the 100% wool worsted weight yarn that we speckled with dry Kool-Aid. And since this was the first one I did, we learned um, that less is more. And so in some areas we have um, pretty intense coverage of the cherry Kool-Aid, but you can still see some patches of the original yarn um, showing through. And on this yarn, we really kind of got the technique down, which is why I think we were able to be a little more uh, lenient with our specs over on this nylon yarn, nylon blend yarn. This has been an extremely exciting first episode of Dye Pot Weekly. Um, I unintentionally showed that there are some extreme differences in the way that the 100% wool worsted weight yarn and the 75% superwash merino 25% nylon yarn take up dye. Um, the superwash and nylon blend sock yarn takes up the dye super fast. And when we speckled the yarn with dry food coloring, we got these tiny, tiny little specks of color. Now, I was a little more heavy-handed when I was adding the dry Kool-Aid on with the 100% wool yarn, but even so, our specks are much more diffuse, and they spread out more and are slightly less defined. But even so, in these sections, you do see a lot of speckling are really more almost like marbling in here and also you know but when we when we started just to dye the base with the kool-aid squeeze bottle uh, we also saw that it absorbed to this nylon blend basically as soon as we added the cool beverage into the dye pot whereas with the wool yarn it spread out more and we got a lot more even color on the base I am really excited to explore how different types of fiber and treated wool versus untreated wool take up dyes. Um, I think that this can explain some of the differences you see sometimes when you are doing, say, a broken violet experiment on a yarn and you don't get quite the same tones that I do. And really, it looks like maybe being superwash makes a difference. But this is something that we will explore more in later episodes of Dye Pot Weekly. I want to end the inaugural episode of Dye Pot Weekly um, to give some thanks. I owe so much thanks to all of you, my backers and viewers, for believing in me and supporting me through this project. Your contributions will allow me to explore a vast variety of dyes and fiber types to bring you some really cool dyeing experiments, through which we will learn something together and we can go on to create really beautiful colors. I also really want to thank my family and friends, um, from my children who talk about Kickstarter campaigns now, um, my brother, my parents, and my friends who have been cheering me on over the years, even though they may not know that much about yarn. I especially want to thank my husband, Keith, who has been my biggest supporter through this process. And I would not be going on this venture at all without his support. And so I really want to dedicate this first video to Keith. Thank you so much for everything. I can't wait to bring you guys more fun dyeing videos. Stay tuned for the next episode of Dye Pot Weekly.